just where I'm headed. Uh, yeah, I guess this would be considered uh, West Central Texas, just north of Waco. The terrain really changes dramatically uh, in this part of the country. We're on the edge of the hill country. You go back to the east and you get into some relatively rich farmland and ranch land, of course. Uh, this Parts of this are deceptively rich. Uh, it doesn't look like much now, but boy, when we get good wet years, this stuff greens up a bunch. But anyway, I'm going to the river. It's Friday. Thank goodness it's Friday. Friday before Thanksgiving. Got one week. Making progress, I guess. But anyway, all right. Stay tuned. I'll be on the river and catching fish shortly, I hope. It's gray overcast, about 50 some odd degrees. Uh, I have no idea. This is early, early in the season, so to speak. It's not winter, it's still fall. This is the first real cool down we've had. We've had about a week of this so far. There's somebody coming up on that far side. Boy, this is a damn dangerous intersection. But anyway, uh, we've had about a week of cooler weather so that that water is going to be significantly different than last Wednesday or the Wednesday a week ago uh, 10 days ago uh, it could have cooled 5 to 10 degrees uh, because it it most likely was in the high 60s low 70s uh, last week when I was here and now I'll bet it's down around 60 degrees We'll find out. It does come from out, out from under the dam, so it probably doesn't vary a great deal, uh, even in the most of the year. Uh, it, it probably maintains the 50 degree mark in the winter, and then uh, 75, 78, maybe 80 degrees in the summer, in the hottest part, close to the dam. Uh, I'm kind of counting on that, that it, that the fish don't change behavior as much as they do in big open lakes as they would in this, in this, in this uh, river, the river system. Because the water, the only thing that varies in the water to a great degree is the level. And it's been stable and will be until this drought is over. Uh, they got no reason to let any of this water out because we've gotten where we received just enough rain to satisfy downstream needs and ag doesn't need much in the winter so uh, those needs are satisfied so we'll see we'll see because I'll be coming up here every week until I don't anymore but I need to get a bite to eat and to get to the river Walk right to where the water gets deep. I'll go ahead and fish my way up. Fish it thoroughly. There's four spots that hold fish, in my experience, that are worth hitting. Yeah, I locked everything up. <laughs> that was neat. really something and it's even less water than it was last week that should not be a problem you know as long as it's moving it'll be fine Some deer been running down here imagine that deer have been going everywhere because the rut is on they get a little crazy during the rut Water dripping. That's why that moss and ferns all along that side. Listen, that polarized filter today. One of 
Oh yeah, you can't see hardly anything. That's all right. The ones above the water are the ones that are important. <laughs> Once I catch. Quite a few houses along that side over there. Lucky people get to live on the river. A little more water coming down here. Actually, that must be. I wonder if that might be groundwater coming up instead of runoff. That creek is pretty steep. Alrighty. Get by this part. Probably got some fish in it, but they'll be most likely little and very leery because they can see me coming. So that's the first criteria is to try to get to an area where they don't necessarily see you coming and cast far enough out in front of them. Fixing a change to my fly with a stinger hook on it. I tied two of them. I did a video on one of them uh, and then I decided to make a couple of improvements and I tied another one and it should be the bomb. It should be the one that really catches some fish. Use last time. Oh, not a lot. A little bit sparse though, but it sure did work. I've incorporated a couple more little techniques in here. last version of tide got it in my pocket we'll see still seeing plenty 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 of fish in the water little fishies those are pub fish red river brasses river pub fish i don't know how unique they are but they are called red river pub fish several of my latest ties there's the one I'm going to use right there that one with the yellow belly red throat it's got the stinger hook in the back and I'm most interested in seeing if that stinger hook doesn't really do the job especially on these small bass because they short strike or they don't get the whole thing in their mouth I'm hoping my catch rate goes way up considering the strike rate that i get i'll get a lot of light hits lots of misses but they definitely strike at it but they don't get that big hook in their mouth so i'm thinking that stinger if nothing else it'll help catch the smaller bass oh, that water looks pretty good this time of year there's not enough sunlight to create algae blooms or photoplankton blooms for that matter but the water tends to be a little clearer because you don't have to deal with trying to see through the algae but that is the base of the food chain and that's what winter means everything slows down in the winter i am seeing some pretty good movement in the water little rings everywhere all right between here and that wall down there it's about a mile of river and a quarter to a half mile down is where the good fishing starts There's blue heron that's the whitney dam lake whitney oh, dam my latest creation you can see that little stinger hook on there you know, the nice thing is, if that doesn't make any difference, I cut it off, do without it. Let me tell you, this is one nice day. I don't, get to, I don't come down here very often when the wind's not blowing 10 miles an hour or better. Right. See if we can't convince that first little old bass jump on this thing. Nice long cast right into the flow. This is my first stretch where I ought to catch a fish. Oh, fishy, 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 fishy. Where are you? On the edge. I'm running about six feet of leader and tippet. Relatively short, but it should work. Well, the fly looks good. 
Looks as good as the other ones that I've caught fish on. Come on, fish. Where are y'all going to be today? They may be hanging out in slower water. Kind of depends on what the bait fish are doing. I like to get it right to the edge of the gravel where it drops off and then bring it right down through there. One of those September trips down here in early October, boy, that was fun. The bass were schooling, chasing everything. Very active. Had that flood and flush going on. And that's one of the keys to fishing this place is whether they've run water and why and how and how long and how much. When it's a release for downstream needs, you can, I mean, it'll be every day. See if you go back and look at the chart, you can see that they ran it right till November 2nd, I think, was the last time they ran water. They ran it most of October. Once a day, early, early, early in the a.m. or late, late, late p.m. In the dark when they would do it. You get here by the morning time and it already started, you know, going down. Come on, fishies. Where are you? Don't wait, make me wait too long, I'll get... I'll get anxious. I mean, the change might have taken place. Overcast skies, though, that's not bad. Wonder why I don't catch any white bass, but I guess they hang out in the deeper part until they're running water, until it's moving really good. They'll be up here in the spring. All right, well, let's just keep making our way downstream. Uh, there's my first volunteer, little fish on the trailer hook there you go that's why i built this fly this fish hit it several times before he got that little trailer hook in him and it's way down there right. it's working camera's rolling watch what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> oh get yeah him, him, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's not that big oh and he yeah <laughs> Uh, oh yeah and this one got the big hook not the stinger there you go but that stinger got the first one there we go thanks for coming dude bye <laughs> all, right. all right well you, you have a great day cool i will i am <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah all right mighty fine see all you right. later bye, bye. Just lost another one. That was a little better fish. Left me in the moss. Look at that. Can't even tell I got a fly on there. Dad gummit. That was a decent fish. That little bass followed it all the way up and only struck at it after I had started to rip it along the top the uh, surface of the water. As soon as he thought it was getting away from him, he jumped all over it. You. There's where I caught that one big bass last week. I hit it as far away as I can, from as far away as I can. Bass like to get up underneath those rocks. A whole lot of fish. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Decent fish. I don't think he's a whopper. There he is. Yeah, it's just a good fish. Just a good one. We're getting a little bigger each time. Stinger. The stinger got him. Yeah, that fish is a good pounder. Pound and a half, maybe, pound and a quarter. The stinger got him. Right in the lower jaw. That's why I put it on there. I'd have missed that fish otherwise. Right, little bassy bassy, thanks for coming. Chunky little fish. Where'd he go? <laughs> he disappeared. <laughs> All right, there's gotta be more. I do like a fly you don't have to do anything real special with 
when you tug this thing, it kind of goes wounded. You know, it kind of looks like a wounded fish. So all you have to do is just a little short little tug, pause, short little tug, and if they're if they're around here, they'll hit it. It's it's about half and half as far as when they hit it. You know, sometimes they hit it on the run, on the run, and sometimes on the drop. Sometimes on just a pause. And remember, bass are ambush predators, so when I get up to that rock, I'm gonna approach this real slow because I need to I need to catch the fish that are in here without spooking them. It's not very often you'll get a a fish that's been spooked to bite. You know, potentially I might catch two fish at a time with this thing. One gets on that first hook, and one tries to take it away from him, he's liable to get that second hook into his mouth. Probably just need to start making these things articulated. That stinger hook is actually an, another hook. That's the back half of the fly. That's kind of what I did with this one. I gave it a tail instead of just having a bare hook hanging out the back which my other one that I tied first, that's the way it is. It's just a it's just a hook out in the back of the fly. This one I decided to make use of it. Come on. I know there's probably one in here somewhere. It might be a little one. Might be a big one. Get the slack out. And get ready for the tug. Ooh, there he is. There he is. I saw that line move that time. What we got? What do we got? Another decent fish. Stand down. Kind of fighting like something besides a bass. No, it's a bass. There we go. Oh yeah, nice fish. Another one just about like the last one I caught. Maybe a little heavier. Oh yeah, it is a little bigger. Nice fish. All right, buddy. Oh yeah, nice fish. That's a two pound. Oh, well, there it goes. <laughs> Barbara's hook popped right out. But I saw it, that was a two pound fish probably. I'm sorry I didn't get the camera soon enough. <laughs> I was reaching for the camera when he flipped and popped right out. <laughs> Good for him. Didn't get exposed to the air. Let's see if there's a big one in there. Isn't that interesting? The only thing that's over there structure wise that I can see is that big rock and it was orienting near that rock but that was also interesting that I saw the line move I didn't feel that fish I saw the line move and he was on it winds blowing a little bit coming up out of the south which is good because that ought to kick the fish off that north wind is not not so good for fishing Dang, I just saw a fish take a whack at it. He totally missed it. I saw that fish hit it. All right, so far, two pounders about the best I'm doing. Love these old river fish, man. They look like little footballs. Strong, 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 healthy fish. Here's another one. Another small fish. A small bass. Get out from underneath that rock. Oh, that's a good fish. He's not a little bitty one, he's a good one. He got the big hook. He got the big hook in his mouth. A stinger down on the side, how about that? Barbara's hook popped right out. Nice little fish, fun to catch. What number is that? I don't know. I hit that one pretty good, caught, what, three fish, four fish off of that rock, something like that. A roll cast out there, kind of slappy roll cast, a sloppy slappy cast. Water glistening off of there. Yeah, look at there, they're blowing water out of that thing, or blowing air out of it.
good spot. I lost a good fish in here. It was the last trip of the trip before. But I had always just walked right past this where the rocks come out. You know, they're a big rock fall, but there's several big boulders out right out in front of that point. And that's all you're looking for. Some sort of structure. These bass to trap stuff around, hide under. There's an osprey. Flying right over me. Big beautiful bird. That I believe is an eagle. An eagle. I believe it is, isn't it? I thought it looked a little different, and it didn't look like a buzzard. So an osprey and an eagle hanging out together. Best of friends. Things just got real quiet. I saw a big fish roll, which I think was a, a buffalo or a carp come up the surface and splash it what it didn't look like something was chasing something got some movement in the water up here so far no takers on this end lots of that going on lots of little little things coming up and slapping the water oh this is getting good what is that over there Black and white kitty cat over there in the far bank. Growing amount of activity on the water. On the surface right here in front of me too. Just a little further. I really expected this to be where I was going to catch fish. Right on this point because it drops off real nice. There's several big rocks out in this stuff. Nothing yet. That wind just shifted. That wind is now coming out of the north. It got real calm. It was coming out of the south. And I didn't know what the timing was on the front that's coming in that's going to cause all the rain tomorrow. But apparently it's right now. <laughs> it's definitely, it's got the water moving. See that? That was not moving prior. So yeah, the wind has shifted. Well, let's see what that does. Maybe that's why the fish are getting active. They feel that change. Well, come on. Come on, big fish. Come on up. Show me what you got, fishy fishies. Alright. I'm just going to walk right straight down to the sweet spot. Just so that I can have plenty of time to fish it there. That's my... So far, that's... Of course, I've spent the most time down there, too. Uh, I've caught several big fish out of there. That's usually where the big fish of the day comes from. It didn't last time, but it probably will this time. That's if that front system, I don't know what the barometer is doing, but that pressure is dropping. I don't know what that does. But it is a cool front coming. It's going to trigger a lot of rain, which we need, so I'm not going to complain. pipes are right out here actually you can see them right there there's two little dark streaks right there that's those pipes they clear those things and that's what that was when they're blowing air through them to clear them out and then they bring start bringing water in unfortunately that's too far even though that's a good spot those fish hang out right in here big time I got down here in this earlier in the year and I had just a huge group of great big sunfish. I was catching them on every other cast. Big sunfish. Look at that fossil. I don't know if you can see them or not. I can see them on polarized sunglasses. That they're these, these two big ladder looking H, H shaped structures. 
I might even be able to get to that one, but the bank is steep and clear here. You see the fish. The fish are doing acting a little goofy. You see they're moving all up and down here. That might be carp. That might be sunfish. Might be shad. They might be reacting to the change in weather. The front, I mean, that wind is definitely coming out of the north now. Seeing a lot of surface activity all of a sudden, but it's not the kind of it's not the kind of fish chasing fish activity. It's just they're coming up and slurping something off the surface. Yeah, that just doesn't look like bass. That looks like it might be like big old gizzard shad or something. We'll see. Just don't dilly-dally too much. Let's get down here and see if we can raise a big fish off this structure at the cliff. I'm gonna wish I brought that polarized filter. All that water's just nice and clear, calm. A duck or something on the far side. Some kind of shorebird chasing stuff. This is another good spot for small bass where this long flat area here grab a bar and then it drops wherever that water gets nice and green. The bottom drops away a little bit. That's where the bass hang out. First volunteer, a little fish. Up there and goofed around for quite a while before I finally dumped him. I lost grip on my line. Stinger got him. That stinger hook, that's why I put it on there for these smaller bass. They might miss the uh, hook in the front, but they didn't miss the hook in the little river fish. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. I go grow up. Grow up, man, grow up. I bet there's a bigger one. That's pretty. I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing. That yellow, that tree across the River is real bright and yellow. Yeah, see that's that's bass. Oh, look at look at right near my fly. Hey, come on fish. Come on. Come on. Take my fly. Come on. Yeah. Oh, this is so difficult because I got this wall behind me so I can't really cast. And I'm beating the head of that fly. That that old them old eyes will bust and come right off of there. Hit that wall too many times. I heard it go kink. So now my fly's messed up. That's the problem with a stinger. You don't build it right. Perfectly right. It will mess up on you. Alright, so we got some schooling activity. Probably change to a clouser. To my clouser. Oh look, I got I got lots of bait fish in here. I bet I didn't even bring a clouser with me. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Look at that right in front of me. I can definitely feel that air changing definitely feel the air changing a little coolness to it maybe a little freshness to it and I'm just not feeling it it just ain't coming together today up here anyway what is that oh. Man, I'm just not feeling it up here. Look at these great clouds moving in. Wind shifting coming out of the north now. I'm just not feeling it. I think I'll go ahead and hit the point down there. Maybe take a few whacks at the cut here. The activity I saw when I first got here 
was the shad up on the or the bait fish up on the surface and smaller bass taking wax at them. Even that has quit. I'm still seeing some turning. It doesn't necessarily look like anything I'd be interested in. So we're going to call it a day. Work my way back. Fish just a little bit, I think. But uh, head home early. That'd be great. That would be fabulous to get home early. Not have to drive in the dark. Hell, I might go back to the office. I don't know. What should I do? I do have that uh, buttermilk chicken club salad on my mind from crickets there below the paper below the office in that shopping center man that that's the best durn salad I think I've ever had in my life I have it most every time I come up here for lunch it is a heck of a beautiful salad and it tastes great too yeah I'm making myself hungry I think that's what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna go back through town which it's almost the exact same route I take anyway uh, it's probably less than a half a mile detour from going home yeah I'll save my elbow for another day we're gonna have a stretch of about a week of cold wet rainy nasty gray weather I might not do this next week kind of depends on how it actually plays out look at that there's still fish hitting the surface I could probably catch some more I wanted to spend the time well, this is futile that front blowing in just shut it down I haven't had a single hit and all the good spots too I'll hit this up here at the rock that I caught the big fish on but man I don't hold much hope for it it was dead by the time I got to the sweet spot down there the wind shifted there's been a there's a change in the air you know you can just kind of feel it I just saw big schools at that point down there big schools of big carp just laying there suspended you know a foot underneath the surface just suspended not doing anything just resting I bet this is a low front coming in as the wind is it, it, little by little it's gotten more and more and more cloudy and it just less and less and less activity I don't want to throw a fly in there, but I think I'm going to pass. I did want to see it, so I walked over here. Yep, the cold air breaks in the cloud, but that air is cold coming in now. A cold night. It's supposed to start raining sometime this evening. And all day tomorrow. There it is. There's the actual front coming through. <sighs> Fresh air. All that stuff grows. That's strange. All oh, wrinkly. Wish they'd let us go up in there now, but they don't. They do not. Off limits. Well, I'm glad I did this, and I'm glad I'm getting off the water a little earlier than usual. Three, four hours, that's about as much as I need to go fishing. Test a fly, test a fly. Cottonwoods and sycamores. Bunch of, uh, I see a mesquite. I see what looks like a pecan. Maybe an ash tree or two. A good mixture of trees right there in that grove. 
diversity. It's the key to everything. Heck, the sun's coming out. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to get on the road and back to the house. Pretty pears. <laughs> 